Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and welcome to another weekly live Q&A. One second before this fucking thing blasts the noise. It always does this when I'm letting the, the, the live stream actually needs to kick off first before. Otherwise, this gets really annoying. There we go. Boom. Um, otherwise, the ad or my voice begins to boom through it. So anyway, welcome to another weekly live Q&A event. Um, and, well, let's get started. So I see we got viewers beginning to come on. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wow, the questions are already piling in. Okay. Hey, Corey, quick question. Does caffeine have any detrimental health effects and or benefits? Um, caffeine, in, I mean, it depends. It really depends on the person, when it, when it, whether it's detrimental or not. Um, you know, some people are just more prone to, um, I guess, experiencing, they're more sensitive to the effects of, of caffeine and it can lead to sleep loss, uh, jittery feelings, anxiety, um, et cetera. And uh, good, I mean, they can affect your health, especially not getting proper sleep. Um, I myself don't have that problem with uh, stimulants, but um, nonetheless, it, it can be an issue for some people. Uh, there, is, there is some research to show that there are strength benefits and benefits from uh, to increase metabolism, you could say fat loss from drinking caffeine. Um, it's 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 significant enough, but don't expect miracles just because you're drinking coffee. Frankly, I've given up on pre-workout coffee. My whole thing now is beetroot juice. I love fucking. I cannot sing the praises of beetroot juice and beetroot powder enough. I highly recommend using beetroot pre-workout. Fuck coffee. Go with beetroot. That's my opinion. I'm obsessed with it. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It tastes like shit, though. Just letting you know that. Let's move along. What's the best way to have your body fat percentage measured? Um, the best way is a DEXA scan, which is a little bit expensive. You can find it in universities. Um, nearby universities might have a DEXA, a DEXA device. Uh, Bod Pod is the next, the next best, I guess. It's not as accurate as DEXA, but it's certainly a fuck lot more accurate than using calipers. Um, so yeah, Dex is the best. I would say Bod Pod's next best. And then I would put the handheld units in the same uh, ballpark as uh, as like the, the caliper, only maybe slightly better than the caliper. Although I found out that, that the handheld units can be off by quite a lot, sometimes even more than a decent caliper reading. So that's 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 so check check with local universities where you live. Uh, what's my military press? Uh, seating, seated, I, that's something I haven't really done a lot of, um, and I've explained this before. I had given up on the military press for, for years, actually, years, only until recently, uh, focusing entirely on the incline bench. The reason for that was I just felt my shoulders weren't handling it for a while very well. Um, so I gave up on it, and also partly to consolidate my routine. Uh, I felt that by using incline bench, I'm getting a very heavy overload on my front delts, at the same time as getting more of an overload on my upper pecs, the clavicular region. So it was like a bang for your buck sort of thing. So I would do incline bench as like a halfway point between a flat out bench and a standing overhead press. Uh, and then I would do some lateral raises and things like that. And I still do that sometimes, but my standing overhead press, um, I have to do the math in my head. It's, 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 um, I can get like for like 150 pounds, like 12 reps or something. It's not very much. It's not that great. Um, seated, I can do a lot more because I'm stabilized. But I've only begun doing standing overhead presses recently. This is something new with barbell in a power rack um, because I just see the benefits to it. And uh, I don't know. I thought there had been enough time that I was going to give it another go. Sometimes I just like to give things another go that I might have laid off of for a while. Um, and that's one of them, actually, was the overhead press. Moving along. Um, greetings from the Czech Republic. What's up? Um, what did you get on the Myers-Briggs test? Oh, my God, Myers-Briggs. I took that a long time ago, but I can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. Uh, I think that's that same fucking test. Um, that thing with the INFP, maybe I'm completely wrong about that. INFP, IFB, whatever the fuck. Look, to be honest with you, I really don't remember. But it was something having to do with introversion. That's all I remember. And I am I am an introverted guy. So by nature, I'm more uh, introverted, introspective, and intellectual than somebody who is um, than somebody who is uh, you know um, very outgoing and 
more social, I suppose. I, I spend a lot more time mauling over shit. Um, after how long should one switch from full body to bro splits? You should never switch to bro splits. I mean, it's okay every now and then if you want to throw a bro split in to change some things up, but the research clearly shows that you're going to get better results from doing a full body or like an upper lower, some kind of a higher frequency routine than you will from doing a bro split, working everything once a week. So that that's my my take on that. How many days a week do you practice karate? Um, I, I don't train in a school at the moment, although I'm looking to remedy that actually soon. I've gotten the hunger to get back into fighting again. I had laid off for a while. I think I was telling you this uh, because I sustained an injury in 2011 and just never got back into it. I was taking some time to heal before fighting full contact again. I just never got back into it. Um, but I've been I've, I've been training for so long. I, mean, I started karate when I was eight years old that I can keep my skills up training on my own, you know, practicing my kata, uh, hitting the heavy bags, hitting the speed bags, things like that, doing pad work with friends, doing sparring with friends who are in the martial arts. That kind of thing can keep my skill set up. Um, so I don't really need to be in a class every day like I did when I was a lot younger. Um, but that being said, when I get back into taking classes again, mostly because I want to fight, um, and that's part and parcel of that is being part of a team, a part of a, 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 a school, um, it's going to be like between two and three days a week. And uh, I will train on the days that I'm not doing all martial arts, quite obviously. Um, so probably four days of training a week, upper, lower, upper, lower kind of thing uh, around my class schedule. Uh, how can I use fat for energy while working out? You've got to adapt. You've got to keto adapt. Your body will begin to use your fat uh, stores for energy more so when you're doing ketogenic diet. And that takes about 17 days to really kick in, to begin keto adaptation. So, um once you've keto adapted, your body will rely more on fat stores. And that includes the fat you intake and the fat you have on your body already. It will rely more on that for energy and uh, move shift away from carbohydrates. And that's how there are actually endurance athletes who are on keto diets, believe it or not. They actually do exist. Um, who would win a fight, me or Joe Rogan? Look, dude, that's that's just – why do you ask these kinds of questions? I, You know what? People have bad days. People have good days. I'm not saying I'm better than Joe Rogan. I'm not saying that – He's better than me or better than the next guy. Look, people have good and bad days. I mean, I don't know who would win a fight against who on a given day. The only thing I could possibly say is that on a bad day for a martial artist, they are better than your average person on the street who doesn't know how to fight. They will have, they'll still have the upper hand, even if they're kind of lazy that day or a little more sloppy that day, just because of the years of training and the reflex that we have from the martial arts. You are obsessed with these fights, like these versus setups, aren't you? Um, how good is my cardio? I, I guess it's all right. I mean, I, I don't really train for long distance endurance. I train, uh, I do a lot of hit cardio. So I'm really good at short bursts of energy, which is uh, pretty good for fighting, actually. Um, and in Kyokushin, the rounds are two minutes long. So I only have to have enough endurance really for two minutes. Um, I mean, now I've never had a problem with tanking on that unless they, then we go into a lot of extra rounds and then I get really, I can sometimes get tanked out. Um, but, um, that's just naturally going to happen when you're really giving your all to the fight and, and just, they keep calling more rounds. Um, I had one fucker who just kept running away from me in a fight on the mat. He would just keep running away from me. So I was, I was mostly playing catch up with the guy the entire time trying to hit him. And, uh, and that wore me out a bit trying to have to run after this fucking guy the whole time. Um, that was in 2011. Uh, but, uh, my cardio is, I guess it's decent. I mean, I'm not like, I don't have the best cardio in the world. I mean, there are people who are certainly going to be more adept at cardiovascular fitness than myself who put more time into training for that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I, that's the best answer I can give to that. If I could have a superpower, what would it be? Telekinesis. I have said time and again that I would like to have telekinesis. The reason being is that some people were like, I want to be able to fly. Well, you know what? If you have telekinesis, you can make yourself fly. Um, I, I want to make things move with my mind. I want to bend shit with my mind. I want that Jedi shit. You know, it's just so cool. Telekinesis would be so awesome at a party. Think about this, man. <laughs> just think about that. Somebody wants a drink, you could pour the drink for them, you know, with your mind. It would be so fucking awesome. Telekinesis just sounds like a badass power to have of all the powers that I've thought about. Um, how long can you uh, run a mile? Um, I, I don't know. 
I don't I don't know. I, I don't even pay attention when I'm on the treadmill to what my my rate is or whatever. I just kind of do it. I just I do intervals in the treadmill. So I don't really pay attention to that whole how many kilometers I've run, et cetera, et cetera. I don't really know. I, I've never done a lot of I've never been interested in running. It's not my thing. Um, how, how many years of training does bulking become apparent, become impossible? After how many years of training does bulking become impossible? You'll always be able to gain muscle. It's just that it's going to be slower and slower as you go on. I would say that after the first two years, even after the first year, in your first year, you can make sometimes up to 20 pounds of gains. There are people that can do that. The average person might make more like 12 pounds of gains in the first year. Um, but there are people that can go up to 20 or 24 pounds in the first year of muscle gains. Uh, by the second year, you can expect to have your gains cut in half uh, compared to the first year. By the third and fourth year, it's going to be a fucking struggle, and, and onward it will be a struggle. You'll be lucky. I think Alan Aragon and Lyle McDonald both have said, based on their models, that after the, the by the third year and fourth year onward, you can expect to gain like three pounds a year, you know, of muscle per year. Um, now, in the short term, it's kind of insignificant, but in the long term, that can add up. Think about that. And, and you know, in a few years' time, you'll have an additional nine pounds of muscle on you. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's not all for nothing. Besides, you've got to enjoy the training, enjoy getting stronger, enjoy the process. Enjoy being at the gym. If you don't like it, you're not going to stick to it, you know, regardless of whether your gains keep coming or slow down or whatever. You've got to love the process. I just love lifting. For me, lifting is like a stress reliever. You have to find something about it that betters your life, you know. Don't be so obsessed with getting bigger or getting leaner. Just enjoy the process. But do it right, obviously. You don't want to spin your wheels either. If you're going to get benefits from something, you might as well go for the goal. But, um, you know, at the same time, don't hang yourself up. Don't let yourself become defeated. I've been there. I have suffered from bigorexia. Um, I'm better than I was at one time, um, mostly because I've just matured and I've decided that I, I've got to have a healthier outlook on shit. And, uh, and it's the same thing. I gave up a long time ago on being absolutely stage ripped. I don't give a fuck anymore about being stage ripped. I'm happy at 10 to 12% body fat. I'm perfectly happy with that. You know, you've got to learn to do what's right for you and just be happy with yourself and always be happy with yourself. There are people who just, they're always waiting on that next thing to be happy. And this has to be said because you have people who are like, well, I'll be happier in 10 more pounds or, you know, whether it's gaining or losing, you've got to be happy with where you are. Be happy with who you are and where you are and find some reason to be, you know, enjoy the process. Um, anyway. How can I improve my pull-ups? Do the more, as Hammering Hank said, do more pull-ups. It's very true. Um, my advice would be if you are weaker at the pull-ups, uh, first of all, train them at least three times a week. Different varieties. Do chins. Do overhand pull-ups. Do neutral grip uh, pull-ups. Uh, do pull-ups from rings if you have access to that. Um, you know, don't do pull-downs to get better at pull-ups, though. Uh, but do all those, do, do accessory movements, do your bent over rows, work on your biceps. Uh, all of this, deadlift, everything will all work towards your pull-up goal. Get stronger in general. But to get better at pull-ups, practice pull-ups. And don't be ashamed if you need to use the uh, uh, assistance machine for pull-ups to build up your ability to do pull-ups on your own. Don't be ashamed about that. Everyone had to start somewhere. Some people are just naturally more prone to being better or stronger at particular lifts, maybe due to leverage gen and other genetic factors. Um, be just be happy with you, where you are and try to improve who you are. You're in competition with yourself. You're not in competition with me. You're not in competition with the next guy or anybody else at your gym. You're in competition with yourself. Remember that. Remember that. Don't feel bad about where you are. But be honest with yourself. Are you doing everything you can to improve? Are you challenging yourself intelligently? Don't hurt yourself either. Don't do something stupid because your ego got in the way. Don't try to show off. Just challenge yourself, and you know what that means, and use good form. Hey, Corey, any tips for using a spring hand grip to gain forearm mass? Um, spring hand grips. Right now, do you mean those things that you go like this with? Um, I don't know how much they're going to work on your forearm mass, but they can definitely help your grip. Uh, for forearms, my my advice would be 
to uh, do um, reverse reverse curls first and foremost. That'll hit your brachioradialis, which is up here in the upper forearm. Uh, I would do hammer curls, which also consequently hits your um, brachialis, which will make your biceps bigger because it helps push the muscle. It, it's it's a, the brachialis underlies the biceps in anatomy. So as it gets bigger and more developed naturally, your biceps will peak more. Um, it, it, it's not because it works your biceps so much as it actually helps peak them by pushing them up more. Um, so that's one thing people often don't train is their brachialis. So do your hammer curls, a variety of hammer curls, and do some wrist curls, like palms up wrist curls. If you're doing reverse curls, you've already got the reverse direction. So maybe do some palms up wrist curls. You know, do do some sets of all of those over the course of a week or in, in a given day. And, uh, and be consistent with your forearm training. Of course, do deadlift work. Deadlift will work your forearms. Anything where you have to hold, stabilize a lot of weight with your grip, it's going to help your forearms. Um, and, and, and that will really work. Zotman curls are good, too. That's where you curl up like this, like a standard curl, and you turn out like a reverse curl and then fight the negative. Zotman curls will work as well. And uh, forearms, in my opinion, are like calves. Some people just have better genetics to for, for forearm work, I mean, for forearm development. Uh, look at Dorian Yates, for instance. Dorian Yates had these motherfucker forearms. They were fucking massive. But then you've got guys who, like Frank Zane, who just didn't have the genetics for that. They had very high inserts in their forearms, I suppose, and that would make it so the forearms can only develop so much. It's like having high calf inserts. No matter how hard you train them, you're really only going to be able to train what fibers are there, and if they're all highly inserted, that's where genetics sucks, you know, that's where genetics comes in. It's why my triceps, in my opinion, I don't like them because my triceps are highly inserted. So they'll never be as juicy and hanging as somebody who has lower inserted triceps. And uh, another example would be vegan gains. Richard has very high peak biceps. That comes from having a higher insertion in your biceps. Richard will never have that longer look to his biceps. He'll have the, lar the, the, the more peaked Kind of like that softball look. Now, there are guys who love that. There are guys who have that. There are guys, Albert Beckles, for instance, had that softball sort of biceps look. But you want guys with that kind of insertion are not going to have the Larry Scott long, full biceps look. Um, I'm somewhere in between the two. Uh, I, don't, I have a decent peak, but it's not a massive peak. And I also don't have the long, full Larry Scott biceps either. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle, which kind of sucks, actually. I wish I mean, having an extreme of one or the other would be kind of cool. But, um, you know, work with what you got. Train with what you got. You can't, you can't change your genetics, but you can make the best of the genetics you have. Are there any health benefits associated with vanilla extract uh, consumption? I've not heard about that. I would have to look into it. I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Chocolate does have benefits. Now, chocolate extract, I don't know. But consuming dark chocolate is good for you. Uh, it's good for your heart. Um, it can lower myostatin apparently and by a slightly significant amount, probably about as much as creatine does. Don't expect massive gains from that, but it, it does have an effect on myostatin um, because it increases folostatin, I believe. So it has an impact on myostatin levels. Um, but I don't know about vanilla. Uh, I'm sure vanilla's got health benefits. I mean, a lot of these natural... Um, you know, plant foods have health benefits, and vanilla is no exception, I'm sure. Um, is doing pull-ups and push-ups every day okay? Um, I would really do it every other day, perhaps. Uh, although, to be honest with you, I do pull-ups every single day of some variety. Um, even if I'm not training in the gym, specifically my back or, uh, or anything like that that given day, I have a pull-up bar here in my apartment, and um, I will sometimes just do a set of pull-ups. Like, I'll walk in past the door, the threshold of the door where I have it hanging, and I'll just jump up and do a set of pull-ups. And I usually do one set, at least one set every day. On days that I'm training my back, I get at least three sets of pull-ups. Um, sometimes three sets of pull-ups and three sets of chins and things like that. So uh, I'm doing a lean bulk. Is 60% carbs and 20% fats and protein okay? Um, I, I don't know. Percentages are arbitrary, buddy. They're really, really arbitrary. Um, I, I would rather to know how many grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now, now with fat, 20% to 35% of your maintenance calories, that's best specifics. But um, I would the way I handle that when I'm not ketogenic is I would calculate for your fat based on your body weight, your lean body weight. Uh, sorry, your, your protein, that is. Calculate your fat as well. And when you have the calories that you need for those two things already allocated, 
whatever calories are remaining for how many you're allotting yourself that for that given day, however many calories are remaining should go up to carbs. Uh, uh, what's taking this thing so long to start? I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know what you mean. Um, um, is it okay to do karate an hour after I lift? I would separate the two. There is a cardiovascular element to karate. Now, I wouldn't say it's always cardiovascular. If you're just training a uh, technique, it's not going to be as cardiovascular related. Um, but uh, if, if you're doing sparring, like two-minute rounds, um, if you're doing pad work, there, there might be some degree of uh, cardiovascular element to that. And if that is the case, then you can hinder the benefits that you had from the karate as well as the benefits you had from lifting. Research has shown that, if, that it's better to separate cardiovascular activities from resistance activities. Otherwise, both will be negatively impacted. Uh, so my advice would be on separate days or do one in the morning, one in the evening, um, and that's how I would schedule it. Um, what do I think of full body workouts? I think that full body workouts are, uh, are excellent for a new lifter. Um, I think that once you've built a foundation, though, you should move on to having more um, variety in your workouts, uh, adding a little more volume. And the way to better achieve that would be to do upper-lower splits or push-pull legs, for instance. That way you can give a little more time and attention to every single body part than what you can do in a full body. Otherwise, if you were to do every – like, for instance, if for, for you do three exercises for back, three for chest, three for delts, you know, a couple for arms, a couple for triceps or whatever – on a uh, given full body day plus your leg work, you'll be in the gym like three or four hours, buddy, and you're going to freaking burn out. So my advice would be is to, uh, to if when you're a beginner, build a foundation with full body workouts. I'd say for like six months to a good year. Then move onward and do, uh, and do like a more of a split-based work. A not bro split. Frequency is still important for a natural. You want to do something like an upper lower, upper lower, or push pull legs, push pull legs. Any thoughts on protein restriction and lifespan or the implication of the data from the blue zone? Um, there is uh, something to be said of caloric restriction in general uh, and lifespan, uh, and lifespan actually, and improved lifespan. There's also, if you look at it, intermittent fasting, fasting in general, but intermittent fasting is a little safer for those who want to lift and, and gain muscle or maintain muscle um, because you're not going to catabolize your muscle tissue if you after like three days, you're going to begin catabolizing your muscle tissue. Uh, I would say even after the first day, you're going to begin doing so. But that's why the benefits really, people get most of the benefits in the first 16 to 18 hours of intermittent fasting uh, that you will get from the fasting. Um, the way I look at it is this, is that if you are going to get some benefit from lifespan by, uh, or rather detriment to having a higher protein diet, and I don't really consider one gram per pound of body weight for vegans to be all too high. Um, I've seen much, much higher. Uh, then... Keep in mind that you might be offsetting that if you're doing something like intermittent fasting. You know, um, that's my take on that. You know, I'm sure there's, there's going to be some degree of offset happening. I guess it depends on how much significant significance there is from the lifespan effects of protein intake versus the lifespan effects of intermittent fasting. Mm. How many carbs should you stay within on a refeed? Um, I don't count my refeeds. When I refeed, I, uh, which I currently do every Saturday, um, and, and I have, and I've been doing this consistently for about a month and a half. Sorry, I thought it was in my apartment, uh, for about a month and a half now. And, uh, I've lost since I got home from Britain, I have lost about 20 pounds. I'm 17 to 20 pounds, something around the ballpark at this point in time, uh, doing a ketogenic cyclic with cyclic refeeds every Saturday. Um, and I don't count and I eat whatever the fuck I want to on Saturday and only on Saturday. I'll have candy, I'll have cake, I'll have donuts, I'll vegan pizza, whatever the fuck I want. Um, I don't, but my only caveat is when it comes to refeeds, I don't stuff myself. I eat until I'm full, until I'm satiated, then I lay off, take like an hour, two hours, whatever, relax, come back to it when I feel hungry again, and continue that. The only thing I count on my refeeds would be protein intake. I ensure that I'm getting enough protein because obviously things like candy and things like rice and things like you know, pizza, you know, vegan pizza, they're not precisely that high in protein. It's higher in carbon fat. So I do, I am cognizant of my protein intake on a refeed. Um, anyway, uh, moving along. 
um, what do I think of Olympic weightlifting? Um, I don't do Olympic weightlifting. I, I, you know, I, I have all the respect in the world for Olympic weightlifters. I think they're great. Uh, but you know, I, I don't do Olympic weightlifting, but I, like I said, I have respect for, I'm, I'm not a strong man or a power lifter either, but I have respect for those, those, those sports. I have respect for anybody who's trying to better their life and better themselves in some way. Can I consume beetroot powder before and after a workout? Do it before. I don't see the point in doing it after. Then again, beetroot, beets in general are good for you anytime, really. Um, they have high nitrate content. Now, beetroot powder, as opposed to eating whole beets, keep in mind whole beets aren't as concentrated as beetroot powder or beetroot juice. So if you're going to consume um, beetroot powder, you're going to get more nitrate content than you will having a, you know, a couple beets or whatever. Um, and that can help with your... Uh, Oxygen consumption can help with your strength. It can help with uh, vasodilation as well. That's all been shown because nitrates, when it comes to vasodilation, nitrates convert to nitric oxide in the body. It's part of the process. Um, why beetroot and what does it do? I just explained that. Um, what is the best way to do a successful body recomp in your opinion? Surplus on gym days? No, no, no. Maintenance diet, um, full stop. Uh, and let your let your training, by combination of cardio and or your your lifting, bring you into a deficit. But however, there has been research to show that keeping your protein higher, while having a slight deficit, like twenty percent deficit, and there have been and I'm talking about an elite athlete. So I've done videos on this. You can check my channel on elite athletes having a uh, a slight deficit. Um, works just as fine but there seems to be a commonality everyone who recomps successfully on one of those on that kind of setup is doing so with higher protein intake so the upper end of the recommended limit and when it comes to vegans i have as i've demonstrated to my clients the vegan muscle academy i show all my research all of my i cite everything is cited everything i have is cited um 10 more protein than your average uh than your average uh, strength athlete who's not a vegan um, what do I think about uh, Trump denying climate change? I want to keep away from politics in these Q and A's. I, I've gotten a little bit over the top, and people have uh, have complained. And, I, and these Q and A's are for everybody. Um, but I will answer this: I don't agree with everything Trump says, and but it's not a black and white thing when it came to to voting for Trump or choosing Trump. It came down to two candidates, really. It was going to be one of the two. I do think climate change is a problem, and it's not a Republican slash Democrat issue. As I've said before, Arnold Schwarzenegger is fighting against climate change, and he is a staunch Republican. So keep keep that in mind. Um, what does drinking caffeine mean? It can mean coffee, but it can also mean green tea. It could also mean Red Bull. It can also mean caffeine tablets. You, you can get caffeine from a new number of sources, man. It, it's not just from coffee. Um, caffeine uh, – does exist in more than more sources than coffee and you can get isolated caffeine from supplement stores I would not recommend it I don't recommend a lot of uh, caffeine consumption I do think that um, uh, the uh, that coffee has health benefits this is why I still have a, a glass or two of coffee every day when I wake up because it does have uh, car anti carcinogenic effects um, you know it, it's been shown to uh, um, uh, it does have some help. Some it can help with your body composition. It help with metabolism a bit. It can help with strength. Uh, but really, the, the the health benefits, like the flavonoids that are in coffee, um, and I've discussed this in videos in the past too, are one of the reasons why I drink it. I'm not affected by caffeine. I don't. I don't get affected by stimulants. I don't get affected. I don't even get affected by uh, by anesthesia either. It's, it's just kind of scary. It takes a lot to knock me out. Uh, so I don't drink it for the up, for the upper, you know. Is, it, is having a cheat day every now and then okay? That, that's really a tough question because it depends on your metabolism. You know, do you store fat easier than somebody else? Uh, will it offset all of the hard work you've put in on your, uh, on your diet thus far if you were to do so? Um, it's really a tough question to answer. Some people can get away with having a cheat day. Others have to be strict as fuck. You know, um, I, but I don't see why it's a problem to treat yourself every now and then. I would recommend maybe having a cheat meal every two to four weeks, unless you're doing a refeed style thing like a keto diet, a cheat meal every two to four weeks while you're cutting down. Um, that, that would be, you know, to help you with the psychological effects, to, to be able to not fuck up your personal, your personal and social life. And um, 
and just get a break from the dieting in general. Um, I mean, unless you're really trying to compete or something, I don't see the point why, I don't see where you'd be so obsessed with getting ultra, ultra lean anyway. So don't let that, uh, don't let that, that bother you too much. Um, did I know that Clarence O is vegan? What do I think of Olympic weightlifting? I already mentioned Olympic weightlifting above. Um, I, I don't know who Clarence Zero or Clarence O is. Sorry. Um, I O Corey Maine. How have you been? I'm going to read it as I'm seeing it. I was wondering what you thought of skin chemicals. Are they safe, bro? Because I'm guessing I shouldn't put it on the BBC. I'm not going to answer that. Skin chemicals? What the fuck are you talking about, man? Um, push, pull, or upper body, lower body, whichever you prefer. I alternate between the two. If, I'm, if I want to limit my lifting per week, I tend to do more of an upper lower. Um, although I have, I can make a four-day push, pull work. What I do is I just put um, given leg exercises, for instance, on a push day or on a pull day, and I put my lower body into my uh, sorry into my my uh, push or pull days. So, for instance, like on a pull day, I'll do leg curls and deadlifts and things like that. On a push day, I would do squats, uh, presses, and leg extensions and that sort of thing because they're pushing exercises. Are barbell better than dumbbells? EMG research seems to show that bar that dumbbells do achieve a greater um, peak contraction than barbells, which would make sense. You get a full range of motion with dumbbells. You can go below, for instance, with your pecs, you can go, you can stretch on the bench press. Uh, that more than you obviously the barbell is going to stop at your chest, but you can do so with a dumbbell that you can't do with a barbell. So there is more of a stretch and there is more of a peak contraction. And it's more of a unilateral movement. So you're going to fire more on both sides than you would with a barbell. But that being said, I feel that with a barbell, you can overload more. So they're both very relevant. You should train with both. Perhaps alternate. Like if you're doing flat bench on one upper body day with inclined dumbbell presses, but flat barbell presses. On the next upper body day, maybe do flat dumbbell presses and inclined barbell presses. Just alternate. Swap it out. Um, yes, I'm an introvert. Uh, by nature, I am. Uh, I'm a little more, I guess I'm a little more ambiverted because I can actually be the life of a party if I need to be. Uh, I can I can adjust, but the only problem is, is that if I, if I over-socialize too much, I end up burning myself out and I need time to recover in silence alone. Uh, and that could be days to a week um, if, I, if I totally over socialize myself to the point where I'm burned out. It, it, it's like burning out from training or burning out from uh, from fighting or anything else in life. Uh, you need to recover from it. Um, and that's how it is for, for an introvert. Um, yes, I use natural stuff, but but that's that's kind of a, bear in mind there are natural toxins too. I mean, things like for instance, um, um, uh, arsenic is natural. It doesn't mean, just because something's natural doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you, but I would rather use naturally derived ingredients than stuff that's been formulated in the laboratory. That's just how I rather treat my body. Whether that's kind of bro science or not, uh, that's just the way I'd rather, my body. I'd rather not, you know, consume fake food coloring and, uh, and, and, and things like, um, things like um, aspartame and that kind of thing. I'd rather, if I'm going to sweeten without calories, Use something like monk fruit or or stevia, basically. Um, why was Jesus not vegan? I I don't know. I I, <laughs> I don't even get yeah, Henry Hanks says he wasn't real. I don't even know if Jesus was real. I mean, like there's a mix a mix of accounts. Some that say Jesus existed. Some that say he didn't exist. And there's no record of Jesus. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not religious, and I don't really read into it. Um, somebody keeps asking about Clarence O or Clarence Zero or something. Being a vegan, I don't know who that is. Um, and I've said I respect Olympic weightlifting. I'm not an Olympic weightlifter. I feel that if I if I was to incorporate Olympic lifts, that that they would be beneficial, but they would not be the bulk of my routine. It's kind of like how I I do powerlifting moves, like I'll squat and I'll deadlift and I'll do overhead pressing now and I'll and I bench and everything, but. I also do lateral raises, things that powerlifters wouldn't do. I do dumbbell curls. I do, you know, pushdowns, that kind of stuff. The stuff that that, that uh, bodybuilders do. 
Do I eat the same foods every day? Yeah, I do. It's just easier than building more than one meal plan for myself. So I just make one meal plan and stick with it. And then every Saturday I have my uh, my refeed day. Um, oh, God. Let's see here. Um, I, look, I don't know. Maybe Jesus did. Maybe he didn't exist. I, 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 I don't know. Look, I don't know enough about um, that Christian history, to be honest with you. I'm not a Christian. I, I, I was raised in a Protestant household, but my parents weren't really active Protestants. They were kind of like in theory. It's like they believed in, in God in, in theory. They didn't really do anything to practice their faith. Um, and, and I just, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a faithful person in that sense, I, up to any faith at all. Um, so I, I, I'm not an atheist either. I'm an agnostic. I've said it before. Um, I ask fight questions because you always have funny reactions. Hammering Hank, the reason why I have funny reactions to fight questions is because it's, you can't predict things like this. <clears throat> you can't predict, it's like when people ask me, if you're in a bar and three guys attack you and one guy's carrying a bat and the other guy has a broken bottle and, 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 and it's like, what would you do? It's like, I don't know until I'm in the situation and having to respond. Martial arts is about getting yourself to the point where it becomes a reflex. Practice, 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 and then practice some more. Hit pads, hit bags, fight and sparring. Sparring is so important because you're, you're fighting a resisting, unpredictable opponent. I can't tell you what would happen in a fight, any given fight with any given person, because it's going to be about reaction. It's, it's a call. It's like music it's, it's in, or speaking. It's all call and response. You know, uh, like when you're playing a solo on guitar, for instance, and I'm a guitarist, so I say this, um, you know, and you're, you're, you're improvising over a piece of music. You know, you might be doing call and response type, type work with the, uh, like the keyboard player or the bass player or something. You're going to be responding to what they're doing. Same thing with a fight. It's going to be call and response, give and take. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't have to tell you. You should never go into a fight with preconceived notions of who's going to win, who's going to lose, um, be it yourself or the other person, and never go in with a plan. Really, don't go in with a plan. The only thing you should do going into a fight is train your ass off. Prepare yourself for the fight. Get good sleep. Eat well. And then fight. You know, But don't go in thinking overanalyzing like you know well this person's very kick heavy so I mean it's good to know those kinds of things but what if the person decides to change things up what if they're a, a kick heavy person and suddenly in the fight and I've seen this happen before they're throwing more fucking punches you know you've got to be prepared to deal with the unpredictable nature of a resisting live human opponent and uh, therein lies the challenge of the martial arts and therein lies your goal of practicing becoming the best you can be um, what do you think of, of hit training with elliptical? I think it's great. I think that hit training with treadmill, elliptical, bike, whatever. I personally like doing hit training with us uh, with 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 uh, heavy bags because um, it, it practices my martial arts. So for me, that's great because I enjoy it. I have ADHD, so I've got to fucking enjoy it. Running on a treadmill makes me want to like it's it's just it's like watching paint fucking dry. So <laughs> do whatever cardio appeals to you, you think is going to benefit you in some way, and find a way to make it make hit work with it. You can you can make hit work with pretty much everything from jump ropes to fighting to you know to running to biking to whatever. There's, there's ways to make to incorporate hit into almost everything I can possibly think of. Um, and same thing with steady state. There's ways to turn everything in sort of more of a steady state type uh, type session as well. Just go with what you enjoy. You'll you'll stick with something if you enjoy it. Um, hi, Master Ray. Master Ray is saying hi to everyone. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Jesus. What what am I missing? Is there some Jesus thing on TV right now? Why is everyone talking about freaking Jesus? <laughs> I didn't even bring this up. Um, best martial art for street fights. Whatever you can relate to. Um, that's the thing about martial arts. I hate when people say that, oh, Taekwondo sucks, because I've seen great Taekwondo fighters. People say Kung Fu sucks, I've seen great Kung Fu fighters. You know, um, really the martial arts is about what you can connect with and getting a good teacher. You have to have a good instructor. And fighting, 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 fighting. God, you've got to find a school that spars. you got to learn to take hits. you got to learn to give hits. And you got to do it regularly. you got to deal with the adrenaline dump of being in a fight, knowing that this person is going to hurt you. But 
That being said, I think that having a broad understanding of grappling or some kind of ground game with striking is the best way to go. So you, boxing, karate, Muay Thai, Taekwondo, that can get you, if you're sparring a lot and you're really training hard, can get you your striking game and your footwork. But get in some wrestling, some jiu-jitsu, or uh, you know, even judo or something to learn how to grapple, throw, and and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, you, you should really balance it all, or just go to an MMA school, and they'll kind of teach you a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, because now you've got these hybrid, these hybrid arts, even karate. And I really, really, really want to find this. Um, there isn't one in New York City for whatever fucking reason yet. But for years, they have been talking about bringing Daido Juku from Japan. It's also known as Kudo. It's a combination of judo, jiu-jitsu, and karate, kyokushin karate, no less. And it, it's, a, it's a full contact version of these three things put together. I want to train in that so fucking bad, but there is no school in New York. I'm not even, a, I think there's some in California, but outside of Japan, there's none in New York that I'm aware of. They had a seminar here a few years back, but it's been radio silent since, and I would love to fight a Dadajuku school. Um, it just, it looks so fucking awesome. And the Russian fighters in Daidojuku are fucking, they're beasts. They're beasts. If you go to YouTube and type in Daidojuku or Kudo and look at some of these Russian guys, those motherfuckers are beasts. They are beasts. Um, but boxing is good. Uh, Henry Hank is right. Boxing is a really good stand up art. But the reason why I like, you know, Muay Thai and karate and things like that is because you get kicking in there as well. It's good to understand the different, different kinds of stand up techniques. And boxing is very much focused on, you know, obviously just punching. Um, that, that, that's, that's true. Mar uh, Marcellus Wallace is, is right. Uh, <laughs> Marcellus Wallace, I'm a big Pulp Fiction fan. Um, but it's true. If you are taken to the floor, you're fucked. If you don't understand how to, how to deal with, uh, with, with the ground, being on the ground when fighting on the ground. This is why I think that having a mix is the best way to go about it. Um, why is everyone on about Jesus? I really don't understand. This, this is everyone's talking about Jesus. Everyone is. Um, <laughs> why are we holding Jesus hostage in America? Like I don't even know what's going on. I'm not even gonna try to guess this shit. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> it's all. I'm just trying to like get through all this shit. There's so much Jesus shit. Jesus, got me saying it now. Has anyone ever told you to audition for a role as Superman? No, I was. I I had a girl that I was seeing uh, back when Captain America uh, came out. Uh, actually, Superman. I'll get to that in a minute. There was a girl I was seeing back at the time when Captain America, the first Captain America film, or was it the fucking Avengers? It was something. The first time that Chris Evans played Captain America, whatever the fuck movie that was, um, a girl saw a poster of him. And said, you know, you would have made a good Captain America. Uh, I've also been told by a girl I was dating in 2013 that I would make a good He-Man. In fact, she I've been called He-Man by about three different girls that I've dated. Um, I did have one girl tell me one time that she thought that I had the body that uh, the super Superman had in the uh, in, in the, uh, what's his name um, uh, the guy the guy who currently plays Superman. Um, I can't think of his name right now. I, I'm really shitty with that kind of thing. I think he's a British actor or something. Uh, um, it, it's irrelevant. But when his first film, his first Superman came out, I was dating this girl, and she told me that I that she it was she felt that she was it was like being with Superman because I had the muscle that whatever. You know, girls say weird shit when you date them and you have muscle. They 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 and then they and then later on they complain that you fucking train too much. It's like, well what do you want? Do you want me to have the body? Which requires training, <laughs> or do you want me to stop training and look like what the fuck? I I, I can't I, I just it, it, it it's so annoying, you know. Uh, Ninja Turtles by the way. I love the turtles. Um let's see here. What's your advice on recovering from a knee sprain? I'm having trouble bending my knee and stretching uh, so that my heel can touch my glutes standing up. Um, I would see a physical therapist. Look, I'm not a doctor, a sport medicine doctor. See somebody who is, you know, registered in that field. Um, for now, maybe ice it, rest it, don't train it. Uh, maybe stick away from a lot of lower body work that, you know, which is pretty much everything that's going to involve the knee in some capacity. 
some more so than others. Uh, but ice it, rest it, um, sometimes use warm pads on it as well. Uh, I would get maybe some massages done, uh, but I would see a sport medicine doctor. That's what I did for my shoulders and my back um, when I had a, a case of upper cross syndrome that occurred about a year, a little more than a year, a little more than a year ago, about a year and a half ago. And I also saw a sport medicine doctor with my, um, my TFCC tear in my wrist, which took about a year to heal, close to a year to heal. That sucked. You never realize how much you appreciate having a working wrist until you lose your wrist. <laughs> it changed the way I had to train for the better part of the year. I was doing a lot of machine work and neutral grip work. Um, what's my opinion on jelking? The, uh, I don't think I know what that is. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, I'd like to shoot some more workout footage. Everyone's asking this. Keep in mind, I shoot myself, and I use a camera phone, and I'm in a crowded gym, so I've got to use angles. I've got to prop the phone against a wall or something. I'm not allowed to have a tripod in my gym, um, especially in peak hour. Um, so I, I hide the phone against my workout bag, which is also against gym rules, but nobody stopped me yet. Um, they've told me about it, but I don't fucking listen to them. Um, because lockers are constantly broken into in New York City gyms uh, with like bolt cutters. You can lose your shit that way. Um, so I bring my stuff in a small bag and I'll prop the phone against the bag or against the wall or wherever that I can get a convenient shot. The problem is it creates strange angles. Um, and that's just, that's just how it is. And if somebody walks by and it shakes the phone, it might slip and then I lose that footage and I've got to reshoot it again. Uh, so I, I, I don't, I'm not, let's put it this way, I'm not inspired to do a lot of gym workout videos for that very reason. Although I would like to do more, um, I'm considering filming a leg session soon. Uh, I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I got to pick a day when it's not going to be crowded. Because again, the peak hour thing is fucking annoying. Um, yeah, uh, but I would like to do more videos for you guys on training. I really would. My top three favorite movies, um, Aliens, the sequel. Uh, the first Alien was great, but Aliens, the sequel from 1986, is probably one of my favorite films of all time. Um, God, that's a really tough one because there's so many good good movies out there. Um, I would like to say, series-wise, the entire Alien series is probably one of my favorite things I've ever I've ever seen. It, it defined my childhood. Um, American Psycho. I love American Psycho. I love the book first. Uh, but I don't know if I'd call it my favorite film of all time. Fuck, that's a hard fucking question. Event Horizon, believe it or not, Event Horizon would be on that list. I would definitely put Event Horizon. So Event Horizon, Aliens, uh, shit, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what my third one would be. Maybe Predator. Um, I'm a big action sci-fi horror fan, so I'm not going to really name comedies here. Um, Anyway, uh, how do you combat f fatigue and lethargy? I need to sleep during the day to feel somewhat normal. Um, maybe you're not getting enough sleep at night. If you have to take naps during the day, maybe your sleep schedule is fucked up. I would, I would advise you to get to bed a little earlier. Um, try to get eight to 10 hours of sleep at night. Um, if you're training hard, now if you're an average person, six to eight would probably work just fine. But if you're a hard training um, individual, you're going to need more sleep to recover from all the training you're doing, you know? So eat a proper diet, get enough of, of the macros and everything you need uh, to be able to recover for one, get plenty of sleep, have rest days. And uh, those are all the things I would suggest if you want to, uh, to improve your, um, your, your, your fatigue levels. And if that's not helping, there might be underlying conditions. Get some blood work, talk to your doctor, see if you're um, deficient in something. And uh, and uh, and and go from there too, because that could also be a problem. You want to catch a deficiency before it gets really bad. Some of them can kill you, so uh, keep that in mind. Moving along, where is he reading these comments at? I, I'm I'm reading them on the side of the screen. They appear on the side of the screen. I don't I don't know where you guys see the stuff, but on 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 the on my screen, my view, I have my screen with myself on the on the side here. Uh, I can see myself. It's not in real time, though. I'm seeing a delay. And then I have the questions on the side. Um, 
I do have multiple videos on soy and estrogen, and I'm sick and tired of making videos on soy and estrogen. I can only repeat, I've repeated what I've said about soy and estrogen so many times. I'm, I, you know, look those videos up if somebody's got a, any questions about soy relating to the estrogen myth. Um, look those videos up. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> people are just kind of talking amongst themselves. Um, trying to see, let this thing refresh, trying to get more more questions to pop up. Uh, there's people talking about dicks now as well. Um, I hope in 2017 more vegan products like Beyond Meat come to Western Europe. Western Europe uh, already has a decent amount of products. Uh, Beyond Meat is, Daya and Beyond Meat are severely lacking in Western Europe. Um, uh, when I was in London, uh, when I go to London, because I go to London commonly, uh, they have other things, um, and I have to make do with what's over there. Uh, this is where doing your research before you travel is important. But yeah, Beyond Meat was not there, so I was eating a lot of tofu and, uh, um, Christ, like tofu was like pretty much my, my big, hummus and tofu were two big things that I was eating there. I also was not ketogenic at that point in time. So I was eating fruit, a lot of fruit as well. And uh, yeah, as I do when I'm not ketogenic. Um, opinions and studies based on intermittent fasting. Look in my in my videos, you'll find a response to Durian Rider. I did a very long video, a detailed video, 12 minutes long, on intermittent fasting. Look that up. Uh, I, I, I think it's called responding to Durian Rider's bullshit or something. I don't remember what I called it. But uh, I did it. I did it like, fuck. It would have been like, either God, was it last summer or I don't even remember when the fuck it was. It was probably it was within the last year or sometime. Uh, but I did a video and it was about intermittent fasting. Uh, and the, the thumbnail has Dorian Dorian Ryder on the uh, on the thumbnail. So in his uh, in his police hat. Um, and I talk about all the benefits of intermittent fasting uh, and even where there's like myths associated with it. So uh, check that video out. And it's all research based with the citations uh let's see here uh since i like prog uh which is progressive rock uh, for those who don't know um do i listen to animals as leaders if yes what are your thoughts on the new album uh no actually and i i'll check them out now that somebody has has brought that up to me um i the lately i guess the, the pro i'm kind of a i'm kind of stuck with prog at the moment i'm listening to the stuff that i've always listened to so a lot of porcupine tree uh, a lot of uh, Riverside, the Polish band, that is, Riverside. Um, you know, Marillion from the 80s, because uh, they, they had some fantastic stuff in the 80s. Um, in fact, a lot of the 80s prog bands are pretty fucking good. Uh, Jadis is pretty good, too. Great guitar solos. Uh, very guitar-driven. Um, but yeah, the, Pink Floyd, of course, too. Those are the ones I listen to often. Opeth. I listen to a lot of Opeth. Um but uh, yeah, beyond that, I haven't listened to uh, to Animals as Leaders yet. I'll check that out. Thanks for recommend, recommending that to me. Um, there is a lot of prog I don't particularly care for. Um, look, I like Yes, for instance, but I don't really like Yes a lot. I'm not a big Yes fan. I'm also I'm also not a big fan of Early Genesis um, with Peter Gabriel. I just am not. And I'm like blasphemy. And I'm not a gigantic King Crimson fan. I like ELP though. Um, Emerson Lincoln Palmer. Yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Um, Henry Cavill, that's right, Superman. I'm kind of scrolling up now to see some of the questions that I missed. This thing just kind of bumps down. Um, somebody asking about intermittent fasting again. Check out my video on Durian Rider. I talk a lot about intermittent fasting in that video. Um, if you just search my videos with keyword intermittent fasting, it should come up with a number of my videos on intermittent fasting. Um, uh, this guy talks about interesting stuff. Shit. I uh, don't know how I ended up here, but anyways, thanks, Corey. Greetings from Russia. Um, uh, nice to meet you, and uh, right back at you from here in America. Uh, okay, any more questions? There's just people talking about their dicks still. I, I swear to God, some of the shit that I see on here. Oh, God. <laughs> Spinach or broccoli, how about both? Um, I do actually eat both. Um, and uh, I, I think both are, are, are great. I, I tend to incorporate uh, broccoli in the evenings, like after I work out. 
on spinach in the mornings. The reason for that is because, well, the primary reason is because spinach um, for my first meal, like in the early, late, late morning, early afternoon, my first meal, uh, has the nitrates in it. So it can lead to a better pump in the gym, my gym when I train later on. Whereas broccoli has got DIM in it, D-I-M, which is an, an anti-estrogen. Uh, it's actually, it actually convert bad estrogens like your environmental estrogens to harmless versions of estrogen. Um, it, help, it helps modulate. Uh, so I think it's a great thing to do after you work out. Um, that's my thought. My thoughts on that. So I eat both of them. What are my thoughts on fruitarians? I, I don't agree with the lifestyle. I don't agree with raw either. Um, that that's that's my opinion on that. I, I, I you, you're missing out when you don't cook food. You're missing out on nutrients that can only be absorbed properly, uh, and even enhanced like lycopene, for instance, with tomatoes, by cooking. You, you don't get that. Um, by eating things raw and some things raw are toxic like for instance mushrooms contain poison um, You have to cook them now in, a, in small amounts. It probably won't hurt you But um, depending on who you are if you're young or really old you might be compromised, but uh, there are toxins in mushrooms that can be uh, Carcinogenic or poisonous even if you if you consume them uh, without cooking them first so mushrooms should be cooked um, corn is more nutritious cooked for instance uh, beans are, are nutritious cooked it cooks out the uh, some of the anti-nutrients. Um, uh, broccoli is more nutritious cooked because it cooks out the goitrogens. Um, yeah, cooking cooking is relevant, and we've been doing it for, for for ages. You know, our bodies have adapted and evolved to cooking. So uh, I don't agree with raw dieting, and, and fruitarians are they, they're they're very. It's not just raw, but it's focusing on fruit. You can become so nutrient deficient. You know, you can't get B12, for instance, from a uh, from fruit alone. Um, and, 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 and really it's hard to get as a vegan unless you're eating fortified foods and nooch, which is nutritional yeast. Um, you need to supplement for your B12. Anyway. All good. Else the same thing here. Um, what do I think about cupcake obsessive consumers? <laughs> I think that they should be checking into, uh, they should be uh, looking into that. That's a problem. It's going to lead to obesity, diabetes, and everything else. Um, uh, would I slap box Rich Piana? Yep, and I'd probably knock him out. Like, did you hear that, Hammer and Hank? I, I, I definitely could knock out Rich Piana. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Nick says, have you tried the new Beyond Meat uh, burger yet? I want to. It's only available in one Whole Foods in New York here in, in uh, Williamsburg, and I don't get to Williamsburg all too often. Uh, it's kind of out of my way. Uh, but I'd love to. I've been trying to order it into my local store to do a review on it. I will do a review on it when it comes in. That and the Impossible Burger. That will be coming. Because I've got to see this shit for myself. I've, I've, It's been built up and built up like a fucking awesome summer movie. A blockbuster. And I want to I want to experience it. And I will do an awesome review on it. Where you can see from beginning to end. The, it, apparently it bleeds. I'll show it all. Um... Uh, I would not consider going soy because I don't have an allergy to soy. So soy free, I wouldn't do that. Uh, gluten free, I I am gluten free. I and when I do eat gluten, I use gluten cutters to to break through an enzyme for gluten. Um, because I do have allergies and I get stomach upset when I eat gluten, but I'm not a celiac. Um. Anyway, my uh, it's been about an hour now, so my computer is beginning to to crap out on me. It's going to go out on me any minute now. Um, the battery eventually runs out within about a, within that an hour. So I'm going to leave it off here. Um, uh, don't forget to sign up. I, I have a protein shake PDF. It's free down below. You can get on my mailing list that way as well, and that'll keep you up to date with when these Q and A's go off. Because some people don't really, I, I don't think they know they're going off. Um, that's one way I communicate the Q and A timing when it's actually going to begin. Um, don't forget that I, if you guys are interested in, in my training services, I have the VMA uh, as a link below for that as well, which has a form where you can ask me questions all the fucking time if you want to and get hands-on advice. There's even a, a video coaching involved um, if you'd like one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, there's all those things. Don't forget to, 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 uh, to, to browse down in the, in the description for all the different services that I have and things that I'm offering. Um, and, uh, and if, if you like what I'm doing, is also I also have a Patreon, too. Remember, I do these Q&As free uh, every week. I, I don't, I'm not going to charge to be part of some special club or anything like that. So um, if you want to donate something to the channel, feel free. It's down below. Uh, and with that, I'll see you guys next week for uh, another Sunday Q&A. Take care, guys.